Hi, I'm Carol, and thank you for stopping by. This is my day late edition of Floss Tube. I've been aiming for Tuesdays. This week, Tuesday didn't work out for me, but that's okay. It just means I have an extra day of stitching to show you because it was not my best week of doing any craft work. Um, I feel a little bad that my plans, they didn't get totally destroyed, but I had this vision on Friday. I had no real particular weekend plans with the family. We were going to spend all day Saturday and Sunday being super relaxed. And I had a terrible Saturday. Lots of just emotional processing that prevented me from doing anything. I mean, it's okay. In the end, I went up to have a great dinner with my husband. Um, we had some awesome conversations, and then Sunday, I actually was able to get a little more done, but it it was one of those, sometimes the best, best laid plans, they go awry, and key thing I want to tell you, don't forget to forgive yourself. I struggle greatly with this. I have my entire life, and really, I am finding the more I take time to forgive myself for the little things easier it becomes to accept all the things that are outside my control as well. I don't know if it's maybe working on becoming a better integrating my emotions with myself. No idea, but that's my, uh, call it, mental health tidbit for the week. In the meantime, you're here for the cross stitching, so I'm going to start with my I don't want to call it a travel piece because I didn't go anywhere last week. That was, with the exception of about 20 minutes sitting outside of church waiting for my daughter, I didn't have any time or space to do any stitching outside the house. So that really kind of meant some limited progress, but that's okay because we're still getting somewhere with it. So this is Country Cottage Needleworks Joyful Summer, and I'm really hoping that you can see this. Um, I also can't put it closer to the camera because it doesn't auto focus. Figure that out. Not today. Anyway, I am doing this one as a um, gift for my daughter, and I've decided that it is. I'm doing no other travel stitching. Travel stitching. Like, no other small projects right now until this one is done. Fortunately, I'm getting pretty close to done. So. It was last week. And here it is today. So, I am really happy that I am almost to the top of this project. There is some leaves going on over here. There's room for a bird here and a bird here. Obviously the birds are not stitched yet, but I'm starting to see the, almost the end is in sight. I really think this one is lots of fun as I added these flowers right here. So they're pretty, like, it's, this is a really cheerful piece. It is perfect. We had some fantastic spring weather show up this week, and it just, it makes me think of the flowers that are not yet blooming. Thanks for my daffodils, I do have daffodils, but I really love, um, a lot of the flowers that come in towards the end of March, beginning of April, so it's just like the nice thought of thinking spring is on the way. This is, um, so I mentioned last week that I was going to be doing this as a Mirabilia March. So one of the now artificial constraints I've put on myself, and I don't know if this is a smart one or a dumb one, I'll let you know next week, but with the exception of my Joyful Summer piece, I am not doing any work this month that is not a Mirabilia. I also, that uh, piece that I'm starting for the Feast of the Annunciation is also exempt, but that's going to be a one day piece for the month. Otherwise, I'm doing nothing but working on Mirabilias. That's a good thing, but it also means that it... When I first decided this, I was like, um, I thought what was going to happen this last week, I was going to spend all week working on Stargazer, which I will show you in a bit, but I didn't end up spending all week on it. I, as soon as I was like, okay, I'm working on Stargazer, then it was 
my desire to go back to Autumn Queen, and I didn't end up getting as much done on the or on Autumn Queen as I was originally hoping, but I did get some. So, as a reminder, this is what it looks like. Um, I will say that I don't know if it's because of the what they used for process. Like, I feel like this photo is very browned compared to the actual colors that I see, like, just everything feels a little cast browner than when I work with the DMC, but whatever, I mean, it's pretty in the photo, it's pretty in real life, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, here's where she was last time. And here she is today. She's not getting big enough, I actually just kind of have to hide behind her. So, I did not do, I'm, so I'm kind of letting this lurch around. Pretty much just worked down in this sector where there is the edge of more cloaks. More cloaks is the same same giant one that she has. The other thing is this, I don't know if you can see it, right here, this puts me within 50 stitches of the bottom of the um, piece, which is really exciting. And yes, I have this like humongous piece of linen. I think this started off as three eighths of a yard. Um, I guess these will fit technically on a fat quarter of the 18 by 27, but my original pieces were on a larger one, so I had to match the size, so there's plenty of room for putting mats around it. It's, it's just big, but anyway, that's... I got a little more done, and it was almost like when I told myself I needed to be working on Stargazer, that all of a sudden I was like, but I want to work on this one. So... The nice part, this week, I get to come back to her, because again, I am only allowed to work on Mirabilia, this is for Mirabilia Larch. Again, I don't know why I come up with these, like, to, like, I don't have to set these rules for myself. I actually want to start so many other projects at the same time, like, I started buying, or creating a fa false list, so that hopefully next time Joanne's has doorbusters and they have them on sale for under 50 cents a skein, I'm going to be, like, buying all the floss, but... Uh, didn't do that this week, but I thought about it. Really, really badly wanted to. Now, did this bring me? I did do a new start, so I was promised, uh, one a week for the entire month of March. The first week of March, I went with the Stargazer. And she's just really lovely. I had gotten all of it, everything I need to finish her up two years ago, and finally decided to give her a start. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a very large start. I've basically gotten an arm. Uh, also, these ribbons, I start at the top of that. But this is on a 28 count raw natural, and I honestly don't remember if the color is raw or raw natural. Not entirely certain. Um, casual linen. Now, the interesting thing, and that's why I'm not sure if I have the actual colorway right, and it's not clear from the sticker that I pulled off the fabric. This is supposed to be kind of soft-ish. It's not, it's not as soft as the Belfast, the, all my 32 counts are on a Belfast linen. And I have found, I don't know how many really super obvious pieces, but a fair amount of vegetative matter still stuck in the weave. Now I try not to pull at it because I can't decide if it's supposed to be there or not supposed to be there. Um, I did have one piece that was kind of coming loose so very carefully with a pair of tweezers took off just that but it was a little nerve-wracking because I really don't want to ruin the linen. But it is a really, I love the, I mean if you can see here just the color, I was worried about whether or not these which are kind of close in tone too the linen would stand out, and I really think they do. So, I like it a little better than if I picked a warmer tone, so I'm happy with this grayish that I went with. And it's interesting, I was, the other thing I was worried about, most of my stitching on linen is on a 32 count. I like the coverage of 2 over 2 on that 32, so functionally a 16 count. And I've never been particularly happy, and when I say never, going back to childhood, I did not love 
to whoever won on 14 count ADA. So this would be Sabina 28 counts, functionally I'm doing 14 stitches per inch. And I was worried that I was going to have too much of the linen showing through. Fortunately, I don't. So that was one of those really pleasant surprises. And it is, the other thing that's interesting is how much smaller she is compared to doing the queens. Now, I say smaller. Okay, these, I mean, they're, both big projects, but Autumn Queen is 184 stitches wide by 280 stitches tall. This one is a hundred stargazer is 190 stitches uh, wide by 275. I mean, they're the same size, but the scale. Well, I mean, the other thing is, don't forget that's including all this beading up here. So. The scale is different and I had this, I remember this with Sabrina as well. When I started, when I was doing my Sabrina, started in the middle and uh, went to the top of her hair pretty quickly and from her waist up, it, she stitches up much faster than one of the seasonal queens. But despite, so it almost, it's like deceptive. You're stitching, you're like, oh, this one's going way faster. And it's really not because in the end you're still putting almost the same amount of floss onto the linen it just the scale of the person is done slightly differently um like I said it's I mean it's not a better or worse it's just I remember this with Sabrina at the time and feeling like oh this is so much faster and in the end it wasn't it Sabrina took me um started her in 2011 and got her done for Christmas 2018 and I really didn't buckle down and get her done until the fall of 2018 when I just basically said this will be my focus piece and I'll make it happen and it is really cool because she's hanging in my daughter's room right now so every night when I go to put her to bed I get to see all the sparklies and it's just really cool my daughter is really really happy like I keep waiting for one of these days and she's like I don't want a cross stitch picture in my room anymore and I'll be sad but for the moment it's I just I think it's really cool also I framed it myself so I remind myself that it's okay, I can actually frame these. I have Spring Queen and Summer Queen hanging out and they need to be, like I need to order frames and I haven't done it. Maybe one day, soon, which won't be soon. That's okay. Anyway, so that's, like I said, I didn't do a lot of stitching this week and that's okay. Again, I at least feel a little better in the sense that I know what my constraints are for this month because uh, I'm serious when I say so I have Modern Folk Embroideries 2020 stitch along, the 2021 stitch along, um, Teresa Wensler's Spring Carousel Horse. Um, I, those are just the four that I literally have fabric for pulled. I don't want to start any of them right now. But I might next month. That's actually the lie I'm telling myself right now is that if I do Mirabilia March, then I can do everything else next month and like totally change it up, which made me figure it out. Anyway, I did decide, I said that it was going to be a very random, like I had no, I knew that I was doing Stargazer this week, but I didn't know what I was doing next week, and, which would be this week. Um, so I actually have decided that if I was going to start, or if I'm working on Autumn Queen, I really want to start Winter Queen as well. She's beautiful. I don't, have all of the materials needed for her yet. I have all the DMC floss. I don't have anything else. No beading, none of the whisper. So I'm going to go ahead and place an order for that. But we're all going to end the LNS. The prices on Mill Hill are actually pretty competitive. It's just their um, DMC prices are terrible. They're also really good with fabric pricing. So, you know, six and one half dozen the other. Anyway, so I've decided that I'm doing. Winter Queen for next week, so that'll be my new start. I do have the linen already hanging around upstairs. And I am hoping, because I, when I first bought these, I told myself I was going to do them one at a time. So I feel like I'm now telling my younger self, your plan is a stupid plan, and I'm changing it up. But that plan was a stupid plan, and I'm changing it up. So there you go. And... Next week, it'll be whatever, so this will be my new start, and then I have another new start next week. And I think it's going to be Royal Holiday, but don't hold me to it. 
I did get all my working copies made with everything except for Lady of the Mist. Um, I got tired of standing at the copier at Office Depot. I just want to say, they take forever. Like, really long time. And I tried starting with Stargazer. I had the whole thing up and was working off of the actual pattern piece. My one concern, I really hate creasing and uncreasing it, but it's too big of a piece to leave out. And I really do prefer highlighting so that I know what I've already done. It just makes the entire process faster instead of me having to find a spot and track and make sure I'm in the right place because I also found my first boo-boo in Stargazer was around stitch number 200 and I probably only put in 500 in total already so you get the idea I saw a very like oh hey I made a mistake in counting because some of this when they're all doing the exact same stair stepping after a while you're like am I in the right area and it takes too long so that's why I highlight working copies like that for me was life changing for dealing with these. I know it's such a small life hack, but hey, anything that makes stitching easier and more enjoyable is something that you should do. One of the things I have been trying to find the right answer for for the last 15 years, probably 15 years, is how best to keep my floss organized. I showed you last week, I have a bunch of the Loran project cards and they're really helpful particularly when you're kind of corralling DMC. I don't love them. The only problem is that the whole, so the card itself holds 20 different colors and it's actually, the whole itself is smaller than on the master cards. And I do have a bunch of the master cards because I have the old, like I can't even find it anymore, the floss storage folder thingy, whatever. Um, that was like my first foray into floss organization way back. Like I was a newlywed and I had no kids. So long time ago. Um, one of the things I did discover with that is I like having the pre-cut lengths of floss. The only problem is I started off with, when I created it, I had only as many like skeins of floss as I was working on Spring Queen at the moment. So it was like two cards. Okay, cool. Well, then I have, when I worked, to my next project, in this case it was Summer Queen. Well now I'm at to four of these master cards, but they're also now no longer in order. So if I'm looking for something, there is no, I literally have to check all of the cards and that's why I haven't put any more on the, those master ones. I really want to, I do like them as a storage option for skeins that I've already opened and used. I don't particularly love working off the skein proper because each length is too short if you do one pull. It's, I think, right around 12 inches. Too short for me. Two is too long. Like, don't like it at all. It's not, just not something I enjoy. So I prefer to take them out of the skeins when once I'm actually using color. I don't want storage that way because they're at least easy and you know what color they are, but Really, at least for DMC, I do f prefer getting them into a usable length. And for me, the usable length is 18 inches. Um, I don't know, getting spoiled with all the fancy floss, but a bunch of that, well, I was gonna say, so like um, classic color works, they pretty much show up already cut for you in 18 inch lengths. So they're super easy to work off of, literally keeping them on the card. So yeah, and yes, this is literally just a binder ring. It's one of the, the DMC ones. I paid too much for it at Joanne's. I should have just gone to Office Depot, but didn't feel like it that day. And like this is a great, it just corrals all of them for my travel stitching. So I just chuck it in the bag along with the fabric. It works out fantastically. So this is at least my, my life hack is the being able to put things on rings when they're small projects is fantastic. The other thing I did, I don't know if you're kind of proud of me for this, because Joyful Summer, it has a bunch of classic color works, but it also has like Three colors of DMC. Well, I don't want to put them on a whole project card because I already have these nice, the handy cards. So I literally have cardstock that I have now cut. And I got one of the cool scrapbooking punches. And it, this one is, I think, uh, six tenths of an inch, whatever. It is literally perfect for taking an entire skein, wrapping it around the floss organizer card. It makes 19 inch lengths. But anyway, it just, like this makes it so easy 
I have tried bobbins before and like my Haid, I actually I'll do all my work on it off of bobbins, but I'm also only using one strand, so it's I have a particular system that works pretty well for it. But I've like finished up Sabrina, I had bobbinated all of my DMC for that. And it was okay, but I preferred having the uniform I don't know. I like having the uniform lengths of thread because you have an idea of based on where you are and how much you have left, like how long it's going to take you. So where you have, like my husband asking, how much longer, the implication, how much longer are you going to be stitching so that we can go to bed? You can give them a realistic answer instead of a, I have no idea, because I don't like saying I have no idea. It's just, it's me. Um, but yeah, so the, I'm going to try more of these I have because for uh, Stargazer, the colors, there's more than 20, but I only want to give it one project card. So what I've been doing is putting all the extras that didn't fit on the card. They're going on a ring as I come to the color. So the nice part is for the moment, I only have about seven colors out that I'm working in. And so for the moment, it's a little more organized feeling. Now, the downside, because I'm kind of winging it to see what works best for me, then I may have given all of this up in three months. And that's okay. But I just, I was one of those, like, the best part is when, like, trial and error and figuring out what works for you. I know that there are people who love doing, like, for example, with the PDF patterns, Pattern Keeper, I actually finally downloaded it to poke around in it, even though I don't actually have any patterns for it yet. But I also realized that I don't have any tablets, I only have my phone, and my phone is way too small of a surface for me to even want to mess with. So that was at least a lesson learned. But it was, I just right now use paper and a highlighter, but it, it's been working for me so far, so I'm like, I'll keep going with it for now. I'm also not starting any full coverage pieces, so that's fine. Anyway, digression aside, that's what's been going on in my stitching world. I hope that you are having a great week in crafting, and I am going to see you next week, probably on Tuesday, at least, hopefully. That'd be nice. I'm trying to stick with the routine. It makes my life better, so. Anyway, hope to see you then, and take care. Bye.